Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. So in the last video, we talked about our quite complicated model where the computational component consists of three rules that build structure, or D structures, those are the X-bar rules, and then five transformational rules that change those structures to meet the conditions of uh, S structure. Uh, this is quite a complicated computational system, so it's legitimate to ask if there's ways in which we could simplify it and group some of the rules and principles and systems we're using together into a single or a, a just a few different processes. Um, so the topic of this video is whether or not we can actually unify the three different kinds of movement, DP movement, WH movement, and head movement. In order to address this, we're going to talk about the constraints that drive those movements. Those are the what we call the WH criterion, the requirement that WH features be met, the constraints on um, features that, um, that motivate head movement like plus Q and uh, plus past. We've never given that a name, but essentially the idea is that those features have to be near one another. And then also the uh, case filter, which requires that case uh, properties of DPs are met. So let's look at those three things and see if they have anything in common. We'll start with WH questions. Uh, we can ask the question, we can um, address the issue by looking at how we motivated the movement of uh, WH elements. So let's say we have a DP downstairs, uh, say it's the object of the verb, and it is a WH phrase. So, you know, it's, um, it's what or which book or something like that. And upstairs in the C, marking the sentence uh, as, a, as a WH question, we have this uh, complementizer that is a plus WH. Um, so in order uh, to motivate the movement, we claim that the DP moves from this lower position into this higher CP position in order to get closer to the feature it has to check off. Um, when you move things close together, um, it appears you can uh, say, yes, these are both uh, legitimate instances of the feature plus WH. If that happens, we can say that the derivation has converged because the features are consistent with one another. Um, in, those, in the situation where you would do WH movement, say, to a position that is minus WH, we would say the derivation crashed because the features uh, were not consistent with one another. So uh, we, we labeled this operation the rule of, of feature checking. You check the features of the DP, uh, which is in the specifier, against the head of that phrase. Uh, this is movement to get two features close to one another. Now let's look at uh, the same thing that happens with uh, case features. So uh, with case features, say we have a DP that's downstairs um, that has a nominative case on it, and it is not in a case position downstairs. But fortunately, we have a position higher up in the tree which has um, a nominative feature, and it has an empty specifier. In order for the derivation to converge, that is, for all the features to be correctly checked, um, we have to move that noun phrase or that DP up into the specifier of this TP so that these two features are close to one another again. So after movement, we've got the items close together. We can even extend this to head movement. So take the case of French, for example, where uh, the French um, main verbs that are marked for tense actually appear in the T position. And that's a, a case where um, we have a past feature here on this verb, and we have a past tense feature up here on the T, and we want to make sure that they are consistent with one another. So if we had a present tense feature down here and a, a, a past tense feature up here, 
that would not be okay. We we want them to be uh, they want them to be consistent. So in order for the derivation to converge, um, we have to check these features against one another, and we do that by head movement. Um, this is slightly different. So instead of moving into the specifier position, we're moving a head into a head. Um, so what do these three processes have in common? They have in common that you're moving elements of the tree in order to make sure that the features actually match. This seems to be a, uh, a general property of language, that you are forced by X-bar theory and the properties of individual lexical items themselves to generate uh, like things, so for example, the, ten the tense node with the past tense feature and the verb with the past tense feature, and different positions in the tree. They're far apart from one another. But your computational component wants to make sure that everything is consistent and everything is licensed. Same thing for DP movement. The DP has a nominative case. You want to make sure that nominative case is licensed. Um, same thing for WH features. If you, if you have a DP with a WH element on it, uh, you want to make sure that that is licensed by a clause, a CP, that has a WH feature as well. So in each of these cases, we do movement in order to get these things that are generated far apart from one another close to one another. Guy, one another. Let's see if we can actually unify the rules and the constraints. So first of all, let's see if we can unify the constraints like the WH criterion or the case filter and the requirements on uh, tense and Q features into a single principle, a single filter. So remember those constraints like the case filter, etc., function as filters on the grammar to tell us uh, whether or not the structure we've created is um, an acceptable sentence of your language or not. And in fact, it's relatively easy to do this. We can conflate those three constraints into a single constraint, which is called the principle of full interpretation, or sometimes just full interpretation. It's typically abbreviated FI. Um, and this constraint says features must be checked in a local configuration. So this, uh, this amounts to saying if you've got various features around, Make sure they're close to one another by the end of the derivation of the sentence, and you will be good. Um, now, local configuration can be defined different ways. For um, WH features and nominative features, it's a spec head relationship. For uh, tense features, it's a head to head configuration. Uh, accusative case, case features are in a head complement configuration, although, in a later chapter, we will argue that they too are in a specifier head uh, configuration. Uh, so local configuration effectively says, get those items close to one another, uh, just to make sure that everything is consistent. If you have two nominative features, make sure that, it, that they're, they're functioning together. If you have two tense features, make sure they're functioning together. It's effectively a check to make sure that our complex structure is consistent. Um, now, we've collapsed the constraints. We can also collapse the rules. So we don't actually need three different rules. We don't need WH movement, DP movement, and head movement, uh, because they're all doing the same work. They're doing the work of getting stuff close to, um, getting features close to one another. So uh, a proposal um, from, uh, from Chomsky and others is that, uh, in fact, there's only one transformational movement rule, which is move. And it's mind-numbingly simple and stupid. It's move stuff around. So, you know, move stuff around. That's the rule. And, uh, but that, you don't want to just randomly move every, anything anywhere. Um, so this rule is filtered or is subject to the constraints of full interpretation. So full interpretation um, is going to make sure that you actually only apply this rule when you're going to get features close to one another. If you randomly do it 
and the features aren't close to one another uh, when you do your random movements, uh, the derivation is going to crash. The, uh, the derivation is not going to be licit. Whereas if you do the movement and you get the features together, the derivation will converge, and therefore the sentence will be judged acceptable. So um, although this rule is very uh, simple um, and general, uh, it is subject to constraints so that it only happens in certain environments. So that collapsed our three movement rules. It's also the case that we might want to collapse our three X bar rules because they uh, do similar things as well. There is a proposal to do this. It's called merge. Um, but for reasons having to do with the, the complexity of the representations that merge creates, I'm going to leave discussion of merge until unit 19, the very last chapter of the book. Um, you can look ahead if you want, uh, but essentially uh, merge reduces those x-bar rules to a much simpler uh, set as well. But the representations look very different from what we're used to. So I just want to um, put that aside until we do other topics.